in this lecture let's make these delete button work so the logic for making this delete button work is a little bit complex but we are going to go step by step so that you understand what exactly is happening here so the very first thing which we are going to do is we are going to get the basic step done so what happens when i click on this button so let's handle that click first so in order to handle that click i have to go back to the code I have to go back to the button and let's say on click of this particular button I want to execute a function. So here I could say on click and over here to this on click let's say after clicking this button I want to execute a function called as handle delete. So I'll pass in handle delete here and therefore now I need to create that particular function. So let's define that function here so function handle delete. And let's say for now, we simply want to log something in the console whenever the user actually clicks this button. So over here, I could say something like console.log. I would say delete button clicked. All right, let's save this. And now if I go back here, let's open up the console here. And right now in the console, we do not have any error. Let's add a to-do item like play. And when I click on the delete button here, let's see what happens. So it says delete button clicked. Let's add another item like dinner, lunch. Now what happens is even if I click one of these delete buttons here, still it's going to say delete button clicked. But now the problem here is that we don't just want to get the information as to if the delete button is clicked, but in order to delete a specific item, we also need to understand which delete button is clicked because if I click this button right here, it should delete play and it should not delete lunch out of the list. So therefore, we first need to identify what button is this click coming from. So now the question is how exactly we could know that. So we could know that by doing one thing. So we have a button here and to this particular button, we could simply go ahead and pass in the actual item which we have. Now remember that in real world applications, you never pass in an entire item to the button. Instead, you have to pass in the ID of that particular item to the button so that we know that, okay, the delete button for dinner is clicked. So let's say if these items have ID one, two and three respectively, and if I pass in the ID of dinner here, so the ID of this button becomes two. So when I click this button right here, we could identify that, okay, the button with an ID two was clicked, therefore delete this item whose ID is two. But in this case, as we are not working with IDs, we could directly pass in the name over here itself to this particular button, which we have. So I could go ahead and pass that name or the item here. But now the problem with this is that if I do that, the function will be called right away. And therefore, in order to avoid this, I will now create a callback function and I'll make this callback function return this function so that this function won't be called right away. So this is what we have done in case of event handling as well whenever we take the event and kind of pass it to handle delete. All right, so now as this handle delete now has access to this item, I could access that item over here. So let's make this function accept the item. And now I could say that delete button clicked for item and then I could also specify the item over here as well so that we know that the delete button for that item is clicked. So let's see how this works. So right now if I click on the delete button here it says delete button clicked for item play. If I click on the delete button for dinner it says delete button clicked for item dinner. If I click on delete button for lunch, it says delete button click for item lunch. Now, the reason why this is so significant is because only after getting to know from which button the delete request is coming from, we could delete that specific item. But now the real question is, how exactly would you remove the item? So in order to remove those item, what we have to do is we have to access the to do's list which we have. So the to do's list which we have up over here is actually present up over here inside this to do's which we have and from this we have actually passed in this particular to do's here so what we do is we take this particular to do's list which we have and we filter out the item which is currently being deleted so we'll take the entire list and if we know that we want to remove dinner from it so we'll filter that out using the filter method in javascript but now the problem here is that we want to perform the delete operation in this particular to do item, which is right up over here. And more specifically, we want to perform that operation in the handle delete 
function which we have here. So here we want to loop through all the items and filter out the item which needs to be deleted. But in order to get the to do items, this to do item does not have access to the to do's. Therefore, what we do is we first go to the to do and take the to do's which we have here and we have already passed it to the to do list. But now inside the to do list, we have those to do's which are these to do's, but we have not passed those to do's to the single to do item. So what we do now is we also pass the to do's over here as well because we want to delete one to do from that. So I could say to do's is to do's. So once we have passed the to do's over here to the to do item, now I could go inside the to do item and make this thing accept the to do's. And once we have accepted these to do's here, what we could do is we could loop through the to do's and we could set the value of to do's. But there's one more problem here. You got the to do's here, but in order to actually change those to do's, you need access to the set to do's as well, which is the method which actually sets or changes the to do's array which we have. So that means now I have to take these set to do's and then first pass it to to do list. And from the to do list, I want to pass it to the to do item. Therefore, now over here, I could say, all right, take the set to do's. So set to do's and then pass it over here as props. So set to do's. Now I have to go to the to do's list and over here I have to accept the set to do's and after accepting them I again have to pass them to the to do item which we have. So I have to say set to do's is going to be set to do's and then again I have to go inside the to do item itself and accept the set to do's as well. So this is a long process which you need to do. And there's one more alternative to this as well, but this is one of the simplest approach. Therefore, I'm showing you this. All right, so now inside the single item, now we have access to to-dos, which is all the to-do item. And we also have a function to change those to-do items as well. That means inside this handle delete, we could now go ahead and delete or remove the to-do item which we currently have. So the item which we want to delete, we already have access to that. So let's first loop through the to do items which we have. So here I could say, all right, take all the to do's and filter a to do such that take all the to do's except for one to do which we have. So this filter is like using a map. So we loop through all the to do's which we have and then we have a callback function here. And this callback function gets access to every single to do item. So we have a single to do here. And then what we do is we check if the current to do is not equal to the item which is being passed here. And what we do here is that we actually make a check or uh, a conditional check for every single to do item. And if that to do item passes that check, that will then be returned by this to do's dot filter. And if that particular item is not passed by this particular check, then that item is removed. So therefore, the check which we are going to make here is that we are going to see that while looping through all the to do's, if that item is not equal to the item, that means that needs to be returned by to do's dot filter. So we'll make a check if the to do is not equal equal to the item. So this code might sound a little bit confusing, but what's exactly happening here is that we are taking the list of all the to do's. We are looping through all the to do's here and we are getting a callback function. And in this callback function, we have access to every single to do item which we have. Then we are making a check if the to do item which we have here, if that's equal to or not equal to this item right here. So if that to do item which we are getting here is not equal to this item, that means it passes this check and this to do dot filter will return that particular item. And if this to do is actually equal to this one, that means it fails that particular check and it won't be returned by this to do dot filter, which means it will now be removed. So this to do's dot filter actually now returns an entire array which contains all the to do items except for the to do item which fails this particular condition. So that means now we have the entire array. So we have to set the new array to this array which we are getting which has that item deleted. So in order to set that I have to use the set to do's method. And over here, I could pass in this entire code for the to do's dot filter. So I'll cut this and I'll paste it up over here. 
Now this might sound a little bit confusing, but if you break down this code, you'll be able to understand what exactly is happening there. So now if you save this, now if I click on the delete button for dinner, as you can see, dinner is gone from here. And this happens because whenever I click this button, this handle delete function is going to be executed. It's going to have the item as delete. Then what this does is that it will kind of loop through all the to-dos and after looping through all the to-dos, it will compare every single to-do with the item which we have. And if it finds that, all right, the to-do and the item are not same, then it's going to return it and create an array out of it. And it's only not going to return the to-do which matches up with the item, which means the item which we want to delete. And this set to-dos actually sets the current to-dos array to this new array which we have, which is the filtered array. And therefore, now we have this new array which has only these items. Now, if I click on the delete for play, even that item would be deleted. So that means now the delete functionality is working absolutely fine. So after working on this delete functionality, the next functionality which we need to work on is the complete functionality. So let's say if you have an item here and let's say you want to say that, okay, we have this item in the to-do list. We don't want to remove that item, but we want to mark that item as complete. So let's add that particular functionality in the next one.